Welcome back. Well, today we are doing a semi-project video. This is in response to all the questions that I get all the time about how to pack for shipping items that have been sold. So we have this tidbit tray. The winner has contacted me. I have her address. So it's going out and we're going to pack this as well as another piece. And that's what we're doing today. Packing for shipping. So we'll get to it when we come back. from the seniors first. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with this book, it is English as she is spoke, and it was written by a couple of Portuguese gentlemen who in fact did not speak English, but that didn't stop them from trying. So, here we go from the section of familiar phrases, which naturally means you will have heard all this before. Don't you have not tell him? Thy have not tell him. We know not us. We are all mortal. No, I have not that to slumber. Don't you are awaken yet? Clean yours teeth. Do not eat so much fruits. Not tear my book. Do not prevent me to study my lesson. No budge you there. Do not make noise. We are from ancient knowledge. There are us arrived. Do not take the way from whence I am come back. We are here to the shelter of all dangers. We are lost. Clean me my shoes. We are near at the edge. We had been too much pain to save us. Yes, indeed. Very, very familiar phrases. Okay, let's start with some basic packing. For a piece like this, and this is, uh, I believe this is a nine inch plate on the bottom, we are going to start with a box. This is 12 by 12 by six. So it's a little larger. Now, because this is a tidbit tray, we're going to disassemble it. And I find it easier to start from the top and work my way down. You might find it easier to just lay it on its side, start from the bottom. It really doesn't matter very much one way or the other. Just make sure you keep all of your pieces together. So I now have the top and I have the two little plastic washers and the little saucer, which I'm just setting aside. So now we have our next bar. Again, that comes off. We have our two little plastic washers. Set that aside. And now the final piece, and this is the bottom. Now, this piece has a very shallow rim, so it has little rubber, well, acrylic feet on the bottom of it so that it will not uh, rock back and forth on the screw at the bottom. So, now that I have all of my little parts, this is just a snack-sized baggie. You can do whatever you please in terms of uh, securing your pieces, but I would suggest a baggie simply to keep them all together so they're not, you know, floating around in the bottom of the box and making mischief. And we've discussed this already. I never put receipts. 
In this case, it's a giveaway. So it just has a little card, so I dropped it. All right, I'm back. Here's my card. And it just says, sue me on YouTube. Thank you for watching. So that way, when our winner gets the tidbit tray, she's going to know who it came from. Yeah, I, well, yeah, I know. It's not as if she's expecting 40 tidbit trays from 40 different people. But, you know, this way she'll know for sure. All right. Bubble wrap. Now, I have bubble wrap here. This is small bubble wrap. The little bubbles are tiny. And I have two lengths of it because these separate into 12 by 12 inch sections. So what I have here is a piece that's 12 inches by 24 inches because I want to be able to wrap it completely around my plate. Now, we've spoken about this before. I do not believe in over taping. I think you need to tape enough to make sure your wrap stays on your item and that's it. For one thing, I would just assume people reuse the bubble wrap because, you know, geez, I have no idea if this stuff is biodegradable. For all I know, this could end up being in a landfill for like, you know, 40,000 years. It's probably got the half-life of, oh, I don't know. Just, but I'd rather they reuse it. Also, by going light on the tape, I am preventing the disaster of somebody picking up a heavily taped item, not knowing how to get through that tape, being unable to rip it, taking a knife, damaging the item, or just pulling and shredding and the item goes flying and it's broken in 10 minutes and they're hopelessly unhappy about it. So light on the tape, at least in terms of wrapping, believe me. The box is going to be taped to within an inch of its miserable life. So now I have another piece here, and this is 36 by 12. So I'm going to pull one piece off. I'm going to use the same two-piece section here, just as I did for the larger plate. And I'm just... It's just a simple, easy wrap because this is not where the real packing comes in. So once again, we've got two little pieces of tape. I just want to hold the wrapping on the plate. There we go. And then our final little piece. Oh, and by the way, people do ask this. I use the little raised bubbly section toward the inside of the item and not the outside. I have no idea why. I've just always done it that way. I believe it provides a little more security. It's harder to burst the little bubbles in transit. All right. So my three plates are wrapped. My hardware is all in a baggie. And now I have my box. My box, as I said, 12 by 12 by 6. Now here we're getting into some larger bubble wrap. See if you may be able to see it easier like this. The difference in the size of the bubbles. So 12 by 12, so is the box. And here we go. I have three pieces of this. And I'm dropping it right into the bottom of the box. That's where the packing is coming in. So, bottom plate goes in. And here is another big fat piece of bubble wrap. Right on top of that. Middle plate goes in. One more. The little baby plate goes in. 
and we're throwing one in on top of that. Squish, squish. This can be tucked anywhere, so I'm just going to drop this right down the side. It does not need to be wrapped. It is metal. It's not going to break in transit. So now, at this point, I'm just fluffing the rest of this out. And this is where the air pillows come in. Um, and I'm layering them. Now, let's see if this is going to do it. Nope. We're going to go back across the other way with more air pillows. Now, what I'm looking for is resistance when I push this down. I do not want this to be an easy close. I want this to be very firm, very solid, and I want it to fight me back a little. Now here's where I start using the tape. Okay. Now I've gone all the way around the box with the tape. It's making at least one continuous circuit around the box. The reason for that is tape can peel up on the edges. If you put a piece of tape across the top, you put a piece of tape across the bottom, any little thing that gets under that bang, your tape is gone. Now this is my final test. All right. I can hear the metal, but I'm not hearing the plates. We are packed and we are safe. Now, this is coming out priority, so it's going to be insured. Frankly, I would strongly suggest that if you are shipping out expensive items, really consider insuring them. In this case, the post office is going to do the insuring uh, because it's priority and they will cover for $50. I ship out using PayPal, which means I can use ship cover insurance even on first class packages. Um, I prefer ship cover. For one thing, they cover the postage as well. So if I have a package that's worth $50 and I paid $20 to ship it, ship cover will take care of me for the full $70. Post office won't. They'll do the $50 for the contents. They will not cover the shipping. And that's always seemed a little odd to me because after all, if it's broken, you know, the shipping didn't happen. So I should be compensated for that. After all, I paid them to ship the item and they didn't do it. But, you know, it's the post office. What can you say? Now, this is another item I'm shipping out. This piece, um, and some of you may have seen this before, this is a beautiful lusterware mid-century vase. I have a friend, and her whole home is decorated in mid-century modern. It's just, that is her thing. That is what she likes. And this is going to her for Christmas. It's a beautiful piece. I'm sure she will love it but I want to make sure it gets to her in one piece because I sent her some beautiful Danish modern lamps and the post office smashed them and refused to make good on the insurance. Interestingly enough, the reason they refused to make good on the insurance was because they were so well packed, the box wasn't damaged. The insides were shattered, but the box itself still held up. I thought, you know, you should give me credit for that and not say this is the reason we're not honoring the insurance. But hey, what can I say? It's the post office. 
So once again, we are going to start with our smaller bubble wrap. Um, now the reason we use the smaller bubble wrap first is because you can actually get that to, to mold around your piece. That can be very difficult sometimes with the larger bubble wrap. So you can get this in actually pretty good and tight. And that's what we want. Now, nope. I do not have enough of this. I need. Mean, The big stuff. Now, this, like the smaller pieces, is perforated every 12 inches. But unlike the smaller pieces, this is much harder to tear evenly. Um, usually, I find that hmm, it's quite a little struggle to get it to tear along the dotted line. Oh, elegant. Okay, now we have this wrapped up like a little mummy too. Now, I'm not worried about these little bat wings on the corner. I want to get this around the piece. But as I said before, I don't have to take every square inch of it. I don't want my friend to get this and have to fight her way through, you know, to actually get to the bosom side. Now, in this case, I am reusing a box. This is just an Amazon box because I need something in this size. That's what I've got. Now, this is a nice piece. Again, reused of thicker bubble wrap. I'm going to pop that in along with a doubled over piece of this bubble wrap. I make a little nest for this. And then we pop right on in here. And here we go with our air pillows. And we are just air pillowing this little bugger to death. Now, let me get you out and you in. All right. And when I seal this box, now I'm not sealing it yet because I need to put a card in it, but when I seal this box, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other box. And that is, I'm going to wrap the tape around it completely. It's, it, the tape is going to go the entire circumference of the box. And then I'll take the address label off. Actually, I won't. I'll probably just put my own address label over top of it. But as I say, I will pop a card in this, squish it down, and... Uh, I, and I always want to be able to squish it down because, see, it's not going anywhere. Um, if you have resistance when you pack, if you've got enough padding in there so you have to force that top down, that is your best insurance against damage. 
nothing is going to slide around, nothing is going to rattle. When the post office, as they will inevitably do, throws you know, a box of car tires on top of that, it's going to give you a lot more protection than if there's enough play inside that box for things to shift or move. So remember, overpack. You want your box to look like it's eight months pregnant. You want to really like have to force that thing down. So that was our quickie packing and shipping. And those are both fragile items. And I will let you know how well they came out. In general, my shipping failure rate is less than 1%, which means for every 100 packages I send out, less than 1% has damage. When I ship to some foreign countries, it's not as good. Canada in particular is bad. Russia is bad. Um, those are two places where I've had a lot of damage. Canada, it's upwards of 20%. Russia, it's probably a little higher. Uh, definitely a problem. Things that go to Canada or Russia, at least in my opinion, really, really have to be insured. Um, domestically, if you do a good enough packing job, you're okay. Insurance should be a function of can you sustain the loss if it doesn't get there intact. So, in other words, if I buy something at a thrift store for $3, I sell it for 30 um, and let's say I have five or six dollars worth of packing in it. My cost is actually going to be like under $10. Can I afford to sustain that loss? Yes, I can. I can give the buyer back their $30 because I haven't really lost $30. You know, 20 of that was profit. So, yes, I've lost it. An, an economist would tell you I had lost it. An accountant would tell you I wouldn't. By the way, that's the difference between accounting and economics. When I was in college, I took them simultaneously, and boy, was it confusing, because accountants and economists just don't look at money the same way. Um, okay. Let's take a look at this. This is from yesterday's video. Now, remember our little salt shaker? I popped the reducer in the bottom. The first thing I had to do, which I didn't realize because I actually took the cork out for you for the first time on camera, was that the hole was rough. So I had to go in with my Dremel with a grinding bit, and I just took the little burrs off the edge. Once I did that, I had a quarter inch hole. I popped my reducer in, but before I did that, I put in a little bit of hot melt glue. That did two things. It holds my reducer in place, but it also creates a little sort of rubbery cushion between the porcelain and the metal of the reducer. Now, remember, I got the reducer from Grand Brass Lighting Supply. They are 30 cents piece. I actually went online and checked one of my receipts. So, you go to Grand Brass, you give them a buck, they'll give you three of these and change. What could be better than that? And because this reducer is designed for lamp harps, specifically, this is a lighting company, this is now a finial. I can put this on any standard modern lamp harp, and it will work just like any other lamp finial. However, I have a tidbit tray piece. So, in addition to a lamp finial, I can use this as a topper for a tidbit tray. And in fact, I do believe that's one of the things I, I would like to do with this. Because I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, look at these. Now, this was Jocelyn's tidbit tray. Um, and you remember, this is one of our giveaways. Jocelyn has the twin to this. And by the way, I am still waiting for the winner. That's Annie Rooney just like in the old song or the old movies, Annie, get in touch because this is waiting for you. I like the color combinations of these, and I actually have a couple extra of these larger plates. So I am seeing another tidbit tray in the future. And this is going to be the topper. 
And I actually, I like the way they look together. Now this one, we've talked about this before. This is the little watering can. This is going on the gardening uh, plate tidbit tray. This is probably not going to be secured the same way. This one is probably going to be secured the way this was. And this has a little nut with an embedded washer, an embedded rubber washer in it. And that's because I can, I can get my fingers, you see, I can get my fingers in there easily. But I could get some needle nose pliers to hold that nut in place while I screwed. So that made the nut a good choice for this piece. This one also, because it's got a nice wide hole, will probably be secured with a nut. This one, however, and this is one of our new little pieces, and this is probably going to go on a little tidbit tray too. This hole is very small. I can get, like, my finger in here just barely. So, given the fact that I'm having a struggle even getting my finger in, I think the reducer, the same way I did this, which doesn't have a hole in the top, is the way to go on this one. So now we have two ways to secure these pieces. And by the way, if I pull this tidbit tray piece out, I can pop a reducer in here and turn this into a lamp finial or this one just as easily. This is just, boy, this is really like one size fits all. This, this is delightful. I'm so glad we decided to give this a try. Okay, now you know how to pack for shipping. You've seen our lamp finial slash tidbit tray topper. Our winner, Barbara Ness, is getting her package. It'll go into the mail tomorrow. I will notify the post office tonight, and we've talked about that before. You go online and you just say, I want to schedule a pickup. I can do that, I think, until 2 o'clock in the morning. I can do that. And they'll let my mail carrier know I have a package waiting. She'll come. She'll just walk right up to my door, get Barbara's package. We are good to go. Boy, shipping couldn't be easier these days. Now, we've already spoken. Annie, get in touch. Your tidbit tray is waiting. You have one more week, and we're just going to have to offer it up to the community again. These, this is the pair of tidbit trays. This is our 25,000 subscriber giveaway. I'm so excited about that, and I am so grateful to all of you for spending your weekends with me. You have no idea. We have two of these, so we've got two winners coming up. This is the Lusterware with this darling little bird. And frankly, I love this Lusterware set because I see a lot of different colors, but this was a color combination I don't see very often. So we've got two of these. Remember, get your name in. You've got the rest of the week. There were three videos announcing this. So the video Saturday morning, Sunday morning, Monday morning, any one of those three, get your name in, because once next weekend rolls around, that's when I'm going to go through. I'm going to pick two winners. I am going to do it at random. Well, actually, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to let Audie the cat do it at random. So nobody gets to offer him cat treats or anything like that. He's too easy to bribe. But I'm just going to turn him loose on the computer and say, hey, you pick the winner. I'm sure he'll do an excellent job. And Well, he would if he could read. So... And how random can that be if the cat can't read? All right. So have a fantastic week, everybody. I will see you next week. And don't forget, Annie Rooney, claim your prize. Everyone else, get your name in for this. And, of course, the pen giveaways are still going strong. Oh, I'm sorry. Lisa mentioned that she is doing camouflage pens. So we're going to have some, some camo pens, which I guess is you know going to be very male friendly. Well, I shouldn't say that. In my family, it's the women who go in for the camouflage. Of course, it's also the women who go in for the service. It's also the women who marry other women. What can I say? My family's different. All right. 
Have a fantastic week. I will see you all next week.